Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Well, if you're looking at this screen right here, uh, something may seem amiss to you. And the thing that may seem amiss to you is the fact that I've not only played through this part, I've played all the way to the end of the case by going into the, uh, the menu under the case name itself and selecting which part I want to start from. There's a reason for that. Yesterday, I recorded about four hours worth of commentary and Let's Play, and I had a whole week's worth of video done and ready for upload. Uh, the next part of which is supposed to be out tomorrow on Wednesday, August 18th. Um, but that, uh, I, t I started to upload part 13 tonight and well just gonna go ahead and say Elgato decided to change the microphone output for my or the microphone input for my commentary from the microphone that I normally use my Yeti to the webcam slash laptop audio that uh, that I use to record so the audio quality was really, really bad. Um, I was panicking, of course, as anyone would if they lost a week's worth of video to uh, to bad recording based on a based on a miss site. But here we are, and now um, I have the chance to re-record some stuff tonight, and I also have all day tomorrow to record as well. So. This should be a bit of a workout for my voice, especially considering that I do know what is coming um, for the end of this case and for the beginning of case three. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into where we left off from part 12. Further investigation. I wish we hadn't been thrown out like that. I wish we'd managed to find some clue as to what that speckled band might be. We didn't manage to investigate at all. And I imagine... that we won't be able to for a while longer. We'll never get past that sailor guarding the door. He's clearly glaring at us, as if to say, don't even think about it. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? Well, what happened to our great detective friend? Where did he go? Oh yes! He's completely disappeared! When did he do that? He slipped away as quietly as the, w as quietly as the wind, but not before ensuring these were securely back on my wrists. So yes, when we left off, we had our wonderful dance of deduction with Herlock Sholmes. Um, and unfortunately, as a result, um, we ended up being thrown out. Okay, so that's how much evidence we have, so I think I need to check this if my memory solves me. That book on top of the table there is really huge. There's a pin with it, too. Yes, I'm sure that's the ship's log. Shall we have a little look through it? Hmm. The writing is so neat and precise. Every detail about the voyage has been meticulously recorded. Hmm, you wouldn't expect a rough and ready sailor to have such beautiful handwriting. Anyway, look here. Last night's log is mostly blank. Presumably that means there was nothing to report. Alright, so there's nothing else new there. Um, I don't think we really need to talk to him. So let's go back. First class cabin number one. Yes, that's our cabin. Not our cabin, it's Kazuma-sama's. Sorry? Your accommodation is confined to the wardrobe inside the cabin. You know how to make a stowaway feel small, don't you? As small as the wardrobe I've been calling home. Anyway, I wonder if Inspector Hosonaga has managed to uncover any new clues. Yes, we should probably find him and ask. Alright, so I believe what I just have to do is move back into Cosmos' cabin real quick. 
talk with Hosonaga here. It looks like they're still investigating in here. Yes, on that subject, I wonder if Inspector Hosonaga is unscathed. What do you mean, unscathed? Surely you haven't forgotten, have you, Naruhoto-san? Don't you remember what he said about allowing you out of this cabin to investigate? He was going to talk to the captain about it. He said he'd lay his life on the line for you. Oh, yeah. But I'm sure he was exaggerating. Let's see what he has to say for himself. He might have some new information for us. You never know. How are you, Hosonaga? Oh, well, you're a little worse for wear, don't you think? Ah, you're back. I Inspector! What happened to you? Your faces! Please, don't worry about it. They're just scratches. Made by a bear, maybe. Right, look, when I told the captain that I'd given you permission to investigate, he told me he'd pummel me with his fists and then toss me overboard. So you fought Zangief up on the on the captains at the wheel of the ship. And, well, we see how that turns out. What? But the pummeling was over in a flash, and he must have decided against throwing me overboard. So it was nothing, really. It looks like he wasn't joking when he said he'd lay his life on the line if he had to. Well, thanks to your efforts, we now know a little about the neighboring cabin. Yes, so I understand. Oh! I bumped into a man claiming to be a great detective a little while ago. I think his name was something like... Airlock Sholmes? I don't think he was German, though. Ah, that explains it. Shall we compare notes, then? We can tell you what we found out. Yes, let's do it! What? Nikolina Pavlova? She's in the cabin next door? Oh, do you know who she is? Please! What self-respecting ballet fan wouldn't know that graceful angel? <coughs> Oops, I think I upset him there. Well, that tells us the neighboring cabin is unrelated to the case, at least. Oh, how? Because angels don't go around committing crimes, do they? <coughs> Oops, now I've definitely upset him. Inspector, has your investigation here, in here, proved fruitful? If I'm honest, there's very little more I can do. Our duty is to make sure the scene isn't disturbed, ready to hand over to the Hong Kong police. So I'm just keeping watch here, trying not to take my eyes off the job. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, there is one thing. I do have a small piece of new information for you. Oh, what? Yes, do tell us, Inspector. Please. New information? What is this new information you have, Inspector? It's this. The Buria's medical officer has finished his examination of the body. I managed to obtain the report. Oh, Kazuma's post-mortem report. Kazuma-sama. So, what was the cause of death? Damage to the cervical vertebrae is what's written in the report. His neck was broken? Yes, it would seem so. There were no obvious wounds or other signs of injury. So at first, I think they were considering poison. But it turns out they found no trace of poison in his system at all. Well, what weapon was used then? Nothing has been found as yet, but the fact that there are no signs of a wound suggests it may have been a blunt object, something that wouldn't leave a mark. Oh, I see. All the body's nerves run through the spine to the brain. A strong enough impact to the neck could induce death. It is a possibility, and no obvious wound would be left. Poor Kazuma. I have a second copy of the report. If it might be useful, you're welcome to have it. 
Really? Are you sure? Yes, it's fine. I trust you. <gasps> After all, if I didn't trust you, I'd never have agreed to you leaving this cabin in the first place, would I? Ah. The post-mortem report has been entered into the court record. Even though, spoiler alert, there's no court in this case. Oh! Mr. Sholmes was here, was he? Yes. He seemed to be enjoying himself a little too much as he crept about on the floor investigating. But then he suddenly left. I suppose he must have become bored. Did he say anything at all? Actually, now you mention it, yes. Just one thing, but he practically shouted it. It's shoe polish! was all he said. Shoe polish? I wonder what he meant. It was when he was over there, by the piece of broken glass. Do you see? Ah, perhaps he was talking about this brick-colored mark, do you think? Ah, yes! That must be it! But how could Mr. Sholmes know that it's shoe polish? Hmm, that leaves me cold, I'm afraid. I have no idea. What is it, Susada-san? Well, Kazuma-sama was wearing leather shoes with a very dark tan hue. Dark tan? Sort of dark brownish red, then. Yes, a little like the color of red wine, but darker. I often repaired them for him. Oh, does this mean that this mark was made by the shoe polish on Kazuma's shoes as they scuffed the floor? The mark on the floor has been entered into the court record. So two new pieces of evidence we got just from this one conversation. I'd say your investigation did prove rather fruitful. That's all I can really that's really all I can tell you at this stage. I should return to my post. My fellow crewman's eyes are boring into the back of my head. Yes, that might be for the best. Thank you. Poor inspector. You look exhausted. Oh, no. Well, I feel terrible that I failed to protect Asogi-san. He was my responsibility. Of course, my pain is nothing compared to yours. You were his friends. The truth is... I seem to have had a heavy head ever since I woke this morning. A heavy head? That's interesting. My head's still throbbing too. Alright, well, that's all for this room. Back out into the first class passageway we go. Things are starting to become a little bit clearer. Ah! Look, Naruhodo-san! Seaman Stroganov has gone! Strong enough? The burly Russian sailor who's always crossing his arms and glaring at us! Ugh, all these Russian names are impossible to remember. Tra-la-la! Did you hear that? It sounded like someone's singing. Tra-la-la, little la I did it the great detective way. This caroling, I know that lark-like voice. Well, never mind that now. This is a golden opportunity for us. Yes, you're right. We must seize it. Let's get inside Miss Pavlova's cabin while we can and investigate. Definitely, before that stringy knot crewman comes back. It's Stroganov, not stringy knot. Well, first, I missed this. <laughs> I actually somehow missed this when I was playing through this the first time, but, uh, yo, hey, Sherlock. Hey, Her Herlock, God, I, I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna mispronounce his name. Oh, it's Mr. Sholmes, look! Wow, you never know when he, where he's going to turn up next, do you? Ugh, I'm not looking forward to this part. He seems to be stealing a look at something as he sings to himself. Tra la la, lira lira lay. I did it the great detective way. He's still singing. Do you think he hasn't noticed us? 
or he's simply in extremely high spirits. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when the yard bit off more than it could chew. And through it all, when there was doubt, it's lucky Herlock was about. Um, excuse me. I solved it all, and I stood tall. I did it the great detective way. Mr. Shones! Ah! What is it? You wanna fight, hmm? Honestly, interrupting a fellow when he's singing, and I was just about to reach the climactic finish! Sorry, I thought you were never going to stop, so I figured now is as good a time as any. I very nearly dropped you to the floor with one of my famous right hooks! Alright, I get the picture. Now could you put those fists away? That's a great... <laughs> it's a great sprite in animation, too. I love it. Mr. Sholmes, you seem to be examining something before we interrupted you. Ah, uh, yes, that. I was immersed in study of the ship's log, as penned by the stuckily built crewman who's usually on guard here. Oh, yes, the ship's log. And did you find out anything useful from it? Well, after 2 a.m. this morning, the majority of the entries are blank. Which means that there was nothing to report. Nothing of note happened, so... Ah! <laughs> you truly are a student from the land of the rising sun. You've been utterly blinded by it. <laughs> Sorry. Your logic, my boy, is inverted. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? Observe the other pages and all shall become clear. It would seem the same crewman oft stands sentry in this first class passageway. And he has an almost religious practice of recording nothing to report every half hour. Oh, he writes that in every 30 minutes? Nothing to report. Precisely. Put simply, the seaman writes nothing to report when there is just that. And yet... The ship's log from last night is largely blank. He didn't even write nothing to report. Do you mean... Yes, there were circumstances afoot last night which led to the seaman being absent from his post. What kind of circumstances? What happened? Hmm, that remains a mystery for now. But we can be sure something significant took place. So significant that it caused the seaman to forget his regular habit of scribing nothing to report in the log. These are important details. I would stake my life on it. You must log the ship's log in your mental file. And there we go. Now that deduction was worthy of a great detective. And if you do take a look at it, it does in fact have nothing to report all the way up to 30, but then from the time shortly after 1.30 all the way to hit the end of his shift, there was nothing. Ah, you're starting to understand what my way is, I see. What makes Sholmes, Sholmes? Brilliance! <laughs> uh, ooh, ouch. What is it? Are you hurt? Oh, don't worry yourself. I seem to be afflicted with a throbbing head this morning for some reason. Nothing more. Well, my friends, until our next encounter. So it's not just a couple of people. It seems to be almost everyone involved that has it, has the throbbing head. He's still singing to himself. I can hear it as he wanders off down the passageway. Hmm... Something wrong, Susato-san? You seem lost in thought. It's just... Well, I feel the same. Sorry? Ever since I woke this morning, I've had something of a headache. A sort of continuous throbbing. Oh, you too? Interesting. So, it's also Susato as well. Uh, let's just go ahead and move into Miss Pavlova's cabin. Let's see what we can learn here. Mr. 
Miss Pavlova isn't back yet. Susato-san. Oh, where's she gone? Hey, what are you doing? Those are her private things. There's not a moment to waste, Naruhoto-san. We must investigate as quickly as we can. I suppose you're right, for Kazuma's sake. Not just for Kazuma-sama. What do you mean? It can't be long now until we arrive at port, in Hong Kong. I... Don't want you to be in those handcuffs when we get there. Really? We must solve this case, Naruhoto-san, by ourselves if we have to. Yes, we will. All right. So examining a few things. Uh, well, this is the most important thing. Oh my, Miss Pavlova's case has opened. It's completely empty inside, but according to the great detective's great deduction, she was hiding her special friend in there. Yes, a friend that she had to keep secret. Because you're not allowed to bring animals aboard the SS Buria. I wonder what kind of animal she had in there. And more to the point, where is it now? We can also check the waste paper basket. I suppose every cabin has a waste paper basket. Shall we have a little look and see what's been thrown away? Naruhoto san, it's poor etiquette to go siffling, stifting, sifting through someone's rubbish, you know. Ugh, those eyes. She's looking at me like I'm a piece of rubbish now. However, these are special circumstances, I think. Exactly, we have no choice. There's hardly anything in there at all. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing. I'm also gonna check this bookshelf just in case. All the books have toppled over together. Look, every single one. Do you think that's a god of the sea, perhaps? He's toppled too, though. It's exactly the same as the bookcase next door. In Cosmos' cabin. Perhaps... Perhaps Miss Pavlova was practicing a difficult ballet pose and fell against the bookcase? I don't know. Would she really be practicing ballet on the same night she ran away from her ballet company? Alright then. It must have been you. You lost your temper and knocked, it all, knocked them all over in a fit of rage? Not everything bad that happens on this ship is because of me, you know. Well, anyway, I'll set them all straight again in here, too. I don't like seeing things in disarray. Um, I don't think there's much else to look at, other than maybe this. I wonder what this little saucer is doing on the floor. Yes, it doesn't look like it's been dropped. More like it was put there deliberately. Ah! Do you think? Do you think there could be a leak in the roof just above here? What? A leak? Is this ship quite safe? I'm... I'm sure that even if there's a little leak in the roof, it doesn't mean the whole ship is going to sink. No, no, you're right. Of course you're right. She's really trying to persuade herself, isn't she? And then... Let me check up here. We didn't get to investigate this, if my memory serves correct. So this ventilator connects to Kazuma's cabin next door. Yes, although what a fool a shipbuilder must be to open a ventilator into another room. Ah, maybe. It's so that if there's a gas leak next door, the occupant of this cabin would notice and raise the alarm. Or the occupants of both cabins would die of gas poisoning. Hmm, that is a possibility. Anyway, last night, Kazuma wrote that he saw a speckled band coming out of this ventilator. Hmm. Whoa. Ah! What's that? Shut down the engines immediately. The vessel sighted a quarter mile forward. Full stop. Hard to starboard. All hands brace for impact. What the? I think we're about to crash into another ship. What? I, I can't 
can't stand it. Susano son, hold on to me. Wah! Susano son, are you alright? Are you injured at all? I I think I'm fine. Thank you, Naruhoto son. It looks like we avoided a collision. I think... Yes, the ship has come to a stop. Oh my goodness, what about you, Naruhoto-san? Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Hello, is anybody in there? Shout if you need assistance. Oh, that sounds like... Inspector Hosanaga? Is that you in there, Naruhoto-san? Unbolt the door, quickly! What? The bolt? Look at that! The door's bolted! Did you do that, Susato-san? No, I didn't touch it! Well, that's strange. How did... And look at all the books. They're all just like they were before again. Naruhoto-san, aren't you going to open the door and let the inspector in? Better tidy this place up first. Our violent emergency stop had solved one mystery at least in a very vivid way, but I knew that what awaited us on the other side of the cabin door would not be pleasant. I hurried around tidying up the cabin with a new sense of foreboding in my heart. And we have another to be continued. But, because we're only about 26 minutes into this recording, we're going to continue a little bit. It's definitely further than I made when I was recording this the first time. In fact, the first recording was a bit scuffed already without the microphone problems, because in the middle of recording the first part here, we had a power flicker, and I was concerned that the entire recording session would be corrupt. Which, I mean, the audio was trash, but that wasn't because of the power flicker, thankfully. So, I'm going to have to go ahead and save over my previous progress, unfortunately. And we will continue. Ugh. Somehow, the door to the cabin we were, ended, we were in ended up bolted after we made an emergency stop. Susato-san took a deep breath, then gently slid back the bolt. You! What are you doing in Miss Pavlova's quarters? Ah, you both look unhurt. Good. Yes, we're fine. Thank you. What on earth happened? I heard something about how we were going to collide with another ship. Yes, it appears to have been a false report, though. Oh, how did that happen? There's a dense fog outside, so it's extremely difficult to see. Someone must have thought he saw a ship ahead. This person obviously triggered the alarm, and that's why we made an emergency stop. Everything is chaos. Passengers are screaming. Crew are running everywhere. This first-class area is the only quiet part of the ship at the moment. Oh, I see. Someone triggered the alarm? Does that mean that someone pressed that button outside? Ah! You, you wicked intruder! Dressed in all black! You are the devil! Sorry, me? I've been called a lot of things before, but devil is a first. You opened my traveling case! How could you? What? No, no, we didn't touch it. That's right, Miss Pavlova. It was already open when we came into your cabin. Inspector! Um, yes? Arrest this man! I know he did it! He is a criminal! It is, it, is it not enough that he has killed a man? Da, and he has stole away as well. If Vixen promises not to steal chicken, do you believe? Ugh. Take him away! He is a trespasser as well as everything else! Stowing away, trespassing, killing... She is right, you are devil! It 
doesn't look good, does it? There is still below deck. Throw him in. Tomorrow we dock in Hong Kong. Then we give you straight to bullies. Wait, a cell? Please, Inspector Hosonaga, is there nothing you can do? This is a Russian vessel. I really have no jurisdiction here. After my latest, after my last effort to appeal to the captain's good nature, I think I'm out of options. This is terrible. This is a real crisis. I've got to find a solution. Immediately. Um, well, I suppose we examine. Miss Pavlova, can I... Get out! Listen, I'm sorry that we snuck in here without your permission, but... Get out now! We just needed to investigate in here to help understand what happened to... Ugh, it's no use. She's not going to listen. I, ne I need to find someone who will. Hmm. If only there was someone else in this room that could help us. Yo, hey, how you doing? <laughs> The way that this game just interrupts suspense with humor is dumb bullshit is amazing and I love it. What the... What are you doing up there? Mr. Sholmes? Naturally, I was analyzing what a weight of 20,000 rubles feels like on one's head. Have I not told you that as a detective, it is my business to know what other people do not? This isn't mere tomfoolery, my boy. Oh, no, no. Um, well, why were you hanging from that hook before then? Isn't it obvious to properly assess the weight of the 20,000 rubles, naturally? I wish to determine if it would bend that conceited looking hook off the wall, on the wall, so full of brag and bounce. Ugh, I never know whether to take this man seriously or not. Ah, you again! The Great Detective! Ah, uh, Inspector, I confess I've been looking for you. I have something to report to you most urgently. Well, you might try looking for me somewhere other than the hook on the wall next time. What is to report? Speak! An urgent report from a Great Detective can mean but one thing. Yes. The case of the curious murder that took place last night here on this vessel, the Steamship Buria has been solved. By me, naturally. <gasps> what? Really? Yes, I have eliminated all other possibilities. No other explanations exist. So, allow me to illuminate, you, illuminate all your minds. For I am about to reveal my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. And we will get to see his great detective's greatly admired great deduction next time on the next episode thank you guys very much for watching uh i'm sorry that this whole next seven or so episodes is gonna be a bit scuffed um i will be sure to tell you guys when i've gotten to a part that i haven't seen before but uh i hope it's fine nonetheless um this is the best i could make do with getting you guys the best quality product possible so in the next episode we will have our second dance of deduction with mr sholmes and i will see you guys then <laughs>